就做一天，早上起床开始做，一直做到晚上。我有时候叫，我有时候叫，我有时候叫，我有时候叫，就突然就这样就错了。我的天！ So in the next section, we're going to uh, uh, investigate what other forms of of the uh, of energy functions we can use. Because so far we the only form that we can use or we have shown is this what we call a parabolic form. It's a parabolic form because it's the function is function of the uh, it's a squared u the, the the energy is equal to what is the form itself? It's equal to the stress squared or the strain squared. And these constitute this this energy describes the constitute this 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 whole equation has everything that I need in terms of the relationship between the stress and the strain. Because if I want to know what sigma ij is, all I have to do is just take partial u by partial epsilon ij, and I will get the stress that I'm looking for, and this will be the Take the derivative of u with respect to epsilon one one, you will get the relationship. You will get the function that you want for sigma one one, which will be a linear function of the other strains. Now, what if I have a material? So for this we need another form because the, the linear elastic equations do not really apply to uh, large deformations. For the because the definition of the strain was given as the partial u strains were defined as partial u i and partial x j, the symmetric part of that. And we as we discussed that this was not very adequate once things start rotating, and it's not also very adequate once you reach very high deformation. And so we need a different form. And so the different form that we're going to uh, look at is a form W, which is energy. This energy to be elastic or independent of that path, P11 has to be the first derivative with respect to 1, 1, 1, 2 with respect to 1, 2. So P ij will be equal to partial W by partial Fij, which implies that the energy is function of the components of S. Give me what the components of that is, I'll give you what the energy is. The energy per unit under form configuration. And I will also tell you everything about the stresses because when I take the derivatives of W with the components of F, I will be able to uh, calculate the 
first, the few first few allocation stress, and I know that this sigma <coughs> is equal to 1 over j <coughs> p f expose, so I can calculate the uh, uh, Cauchy stress. So, we know now that the energy that I'm looking for, basically I just want to come up with a form for this W. Similar to the form that says W is equal to mu epsilon 1, 1 squared plus lambda over 2 epsilon 1, 1 plus epsilon 2, 2 plus epsilon 3, 3 squared. Similar to this, but instead of those epsilons, I want f's. f11, f12, and so on. So what are the possible forms? So, first, let's talk about frame invariance. What are the possible forms for f? If I have an object, then I deform it. or change the coordinate system, both are the same, then the energy here and the energy here, they have to be the same. Because I haven't really done anything except I've taken the object, I've deformed it, so I've put energy into that object. Now if I take that object and just do a rigid body rotation, or change the foreign system, the energy should be the same. Now, I'm going now to look at, to, if you remember what F is, F was equal to R multiplied by U, and so, since then I can always choose Q equal to R transpose, so this is equal to W, which means that the form of this energy does not need to be function of R, but needs to be function only of the square root of F transpose. Otherwise, that form of the energy will not be correct. Now if this if this is an isotropic material, then if this is the object, I'm gonna call this side one. Let's call this E1. With Q, but then apply the same deformation. Then what we're saying is that WF has to equal to WF Q for any Q. But that's only for isotropic. For the material to be isotropic, it doesn't really matter what orientation I start with. Whether I start with this orientation or I start with this orientation, the energy that goes into the same deformation should be the same because the material is isotropic. So for every Q, and 
and for every p in uh, M3, where q and p are rotation indices, value of p f q is equal to w f. And so it turns out, or, or so let's now remember that f, which is the deformation gradient, admits the singular value decomposition which looked like this f was equal to a rotation matrix P a diagonal matrix D I'm going to call it the D lambda another rotation matrix Q transpose where these this diagonal matrix had the positive square roots of the F transpose F and because this is three uh, for any P and Q I would say that W I'm uh, going to maybe choose Q1, P1 different names so P1 P T lambda Q transpose Q1 now P1 and Q1 could be anything I want because they could be anything I want I could choose P1 choose Q1 equal P transpose choose Q1 equal to Q so then W has to be function of T lambda which is lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 which is equal to uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 are positive square roots of F transpose eigenvalues. Now we talked about F transpose F. F transpose F is uh, positive definite symmetric matrix so it has to have positive eigenvalues because it has positive eigenvalues I can take the square roots of those positive eigenvalues and these are what we call the, the um, these are the singular values of F and these are the principal stretches of the material so lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 define the principal stretches three uh, the principal stretches of the material and so if you now look uh, knowing this, you can come up with any form. You find a new material, you pull it in any direction, you find the relationship uh, between the stress and the stretch in this direction, so the stretch in the other direction, the stretch in the third direction, and you write a form for the energy and see if that material abides by that form or not, or utilize one of the forms that have <coughs> appeared in the uh, by researchers, there are so many forms. For example, the octet material model for rubber-like materials has this form: mu p divided by alpha p, where you can choose n number of components of material constants multiplied by uh, lambda one power alpha p. So, for example, you can say this is my, my material will have three constants. The first constant. With, with power 1, so mu 1, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 minus 3, plus mu 2, another constant, lambda 1 squared plus lambda 2 squared plus lambda 3 squared minus 3, or plus a third constant, and you can go forever. And try to fit to find those material constants, which are equivalent to Young's mass and Poisson's ratio. But for this, this is a, 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 a 
large, it's not Young's laws and this one's Rishi anymore. These are just constants according to this material model. Do some experiments in the lab and find do these M1 and M2 and M3. Or some guy called, uh, there's another form, more derivative material model, which is equal to a material constant multiplied by the first invariant of u squared. The first invariant of u squared, u squared is equal to f transpose f. I1 of u squared is equal to lambda 1 squared plus lambda 2 squared plus lambda 3 squared. And I2 of u is equal to lambda 1 squared lambda 2 squared plus lambda 1 squared and so on. Or the neo Hookian material model. The neo Hookian material. Uh, model is just a new a neo uh, is just similar to the linear elastic this is the, the energy is equal to 2 in mu multiplied by lambda 1 squared plus lambda 2 squared plus lambda 3 squared minus 2 if you do a material the, the experiment in the lab to find those two mu and again in everything that we covered today you're going to find some bonus exercises these, all these bonus exercises are simple to do. So take a look at all of them. <coughs> so, the physical restrictions on W. So we said that W is equal to a function of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. You can make any form that you want. As long as it abides by some physical restrictions, these physical restrictions are as follows. That W is minimal when lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal lambda 3 equal to 1 or 0. One or zero. When should the energy be minimum? When the stretches are one or when the stretches are zero? One. One. Following? <laughs> okay. So this has to be minimum when lambda one equal lambda two equal lambda three is equal to one. When the principal stretches are one, which means that there's no stretch. As lambdas go to zero, or as lambdas go to infinity, for both W has to go to infinity. Because as you stretch the material, or as you as you uh, compress the material to zero, you need energy, you need an infinite amount of energy to take to compress it all the way to zero. So the first, the examples, so, so the rest of the section, we're just going to show some examples of these hyperelastic potential energy functions and how we can use them. The first example now, if, if you have the old book, the, the new book might have this written back. So check, maybe the, the newer version might have just for this particular example. Or I'm going to write it here. So, 
A linear elastic material is in fact a special example of hyperelastic potential energy function. In a linear elastic material, if F, or if an option has lambda 1, 0, 0, there is no rotation. The principal stretches are these. The gradient of U is equal to F minus I, which is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 minus 1. The strains, the small strain is equal to F gradient of U plus the gradient of U transpose. This would be equal to F. So this will be lambda 1 minus 1, lambda 2 minus 1, 0, lambda 3 minus 1. So this is the stream. So epsilon 1 is equal to lambda 1 minus 1, epsilon 2, 2 is equal to lambda 2 minus 1, epsilon 3, 3 is equal to lambda 3 minus 1, and then for small uh, deformations, w is equal to u. Now I'm going to utilize u, the form, as a function of epsilon 1. Where is that form? I'm going to utilize this form. And instead of epsilon 1, I'm going to put lambda 1 minus 1. And so you get that the energy is equal to u. 1 minus lambda minus squared plus 1 minus lambda 2 squared plus 1 minus lambda 3 squared plus lambda, which is, th this is, these are Lamy's constants, multiplied by 3 minus lambda 1 minus lambda 2 minus lambda 3 squared, and this is an example of a hyper plastic material potential energy function. which is the function of lambda 1 or function of the principal stretches. For hyperelastic isotropic Incompressible hyperelastic isotropic strain energy potential functions are usually given in terms of u squared, which is f transpose f, with the restriction that lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 are equal to 1. So you're going to find these forms. These are energy function of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, with the restriction this is an incompressible material, which means lambda 1 equal to lambda 2, uh, sorry, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, which is the volumetric, the, the, the determinant of f, the determinant of f is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, is equal to 1, this is equal to the determinant of f, because f is equal to q, the diagonal matrix, or these are two rotation matrices, their determinant is 1, so this is the determinant of this diagonal matrix. So for incompressible materials, you've got those three forms, Octin, Muni, Ripken, and Neo, Okin materials. So, how can we now calculate the stress? If I write this form, how can I calculate the stress? Because it's incompressible, it means if I apply P from all directions, I will not get any energy, I will not get any deformation. So if I apply P from all directions 
there's no def deformation, there's no energy. And so the stress stress is equal to this hydrostatic stress P. Let's put it in tension. Plus one over J F P transpose. This is symmetric anyway. Sigma is equal to sigma transpose. And P, the first pure Kirchhoff stress. This term is the hydrostatic, is due to hydrostatic stress. And this, so hydrostatic stress. And this term is due to deformation. There's a bonus, uh, two bonus exercises. If you can't solve them, let me know. Let's try this. So let's look at this problem. So for, we're going to look at two problems for the rest of the end. 20 more minutes, I'm going to go through in details of two problems. So, problem number one, we have a unit length cube of material, deforms such that the length of the sides become 0 0.8, 0 0.625, and L. So basically, the deformation gradient looks like this. 0.8, this is L over L L over L naught, 0.625 now so this is the deformation gradient and no rotations so it's a simple motion with this deformation gradient now this is a new poking okay, material that follows uh, It's a neo hooking material with a, an incompressible neo hooking material. I should have said here. Made it clear that this is incompressible. So, incompressible, right away, I know that lambda 1 is equal to 0.8, lambda 2, this, the stretch, the second stretch is 0 0.625, and lambda 3 is equal to L. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. The determinant has to be equal to 1, from which lambda 3 is equal to 2 units. Now we know that F is equal to R U is equal to V R, but there's no rotation here, so this is equal to U equal to V equal to this.
Now this material follows a new Hookian material model with mu equal one. So the new Hookian material model is this. Squared is equal to lambda one squared, lambda two squared, lambda three squared, pi one of u squared is equal to lambda one squared plus lambda two squared plus lambda three squared. Therefore, w is equal to two by one multiplied by. squared plus 0 0.625 squared plus 2 squared minus 3 whatever units of energy. And now the question is what is sigma and what is P? What is the stress? The first view of the Kirchhoff stress, and what is the set the, the Cauchy stress that applies this kind of deformation? So I want the stress which you see is that cause this kind of deformation. So W is given a function of lambda, but P is equal to partial W by partial F PIG is equal to partial W by partial FIG. So how can I resolve this difference? I have to find the relationship between the lambdas and the Fs. So F For this particular example, F11 is equal to lambda 1, and F12 equal to F13, equal to F21, equal to F23. All the non diagonal components are equal to 0. F22 equal to lambda 2, F33 equal to lambda 3. lambda 1 by partial f11 is 1 and the rest is r0 
And so now when you look, when you utilize those two expressions for the shear, for the, for the stresses, where are the two expressions? This and the stress and the Cauchy stress, you'll get, so we calculate partial W by partial F. The final answer P, pure, first pure curative of stress, will be equal to 3 plus 2 plus 1. So, what is the difference between those two matrices that you see in front of you is the hydrostatic stress, when I look at the Cauchy stress, the hydrostatic stress is equal to P, P, P. When I look at the first pure Kirchhoff stress, the hydrostatic stress is equal to 1.25P, 1.6P, and P over 2. And the, the difference is, because the first pure Kirchhoff stress works on the area before deformation. The, 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 for the Cauchy stress works on the current area. So on the current area, so the, the deformation is such that this is 0 0.8, this is 0 0.625, 0 0.8, 0 0.625, and 2. So on the deformed configuration, I have P, P, and P. Now if I look at the first view of the Kirchhoff stress, where everything is 1, the total force here, so basically this will be equivalent to P of 2, This is 1.6p, and this is p over 2. And that's why the, 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 the stresses, the different, that's why there's a difference between the first pure Kirchhoff stress and the Cauchy stress. So in the previous example, the deformation was simple because the deformation gradient had uh, just the principle was there was no rotation. But in this particular example, F is a, has a general form, and so we have to find. Uh, so we want to repeat the whole thing and find the stresses. The same material model, everything else is the same, but the difference is that F has the general form, and of course the determinant of f has to be equal to 1. Because lambda 1, equal lambda 2, equal lambda, uh, sorry, because this is an incompressible material, so lambda 2, lambda 
So F I G is equal to let's call this matrix P transpose, let's call this matrix P lambda, let's uh, sorry, let's follow what I have here. P D lambda Q transpose I J, so I at the beginning and G at the end, but this is the transpose, so I'm going to put the J here. This is K. K, L, L. Now these two matrices are invertible, they're rotation matrices and they're invertible, so I know that F is equal to P, D lambda, Q transpose, so D lambda, is equal to P transpose F Q. So P lambda I J is equal to P F Q I at the beginning, but this is transpose, so it's here, G at the end, K K L L. Now I'm looking for partial W by partial F11. Partial W, the partial F22, and so on. Because these will give me the matrix. Partial W by partial F11 will give me the first component P11. Partial W by partial F22 will give me the second component. You might not find this in the older text. Okay? You might not find this in the older book. So, it's just a few pages you should copy. So partial W by partial F1 will be equal to partial W. We, we know we wrote W as function of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. I know that 
lambda 1 is equal to d11. That's the first component in that matrix, d11. So put i is equal to 1. f equal to kk. And q equal to f and j is equal to 1. And if you want partial lambda 1, partial f of 1, this will be equal to Actually, partial lambda 1 by partial f by g equal to p k l k1 q l1 partial f k l partial f by g which is equal to p k l k1 delta ki delta lg because this is only one when k is equal to i and l is equal to g and everything else is zero so this is equal to p i1 q j1 and so you can find all those components that you're looking for and you can get finally p the first viola kircher of stress and the second, the, the Cauchy matrix, Cauchy stress matrix, the first we the Kirchhoff stress will have this form 1 plus p, negative root 2, negative root 2 p, 1 plus p, 1 plus p, 8 root 2 plus p over 4 root 2, root 2 plus root 2 p, 0. 1 plus p, negative 8 root 2, minus p over 4 root 2. And sigma, which is equal to 1 over j, p, f transpose, will be equal to 1 plus p, It should be a simple. It's not. It's not a. It's not going to be a tough assignment. It shouldn't take long. All right. Shouldn't take long. All right. We'll see you next week.